Saruman can touch this. But there comes the demon. Welcome to the map mirroring stream for a 1v1 video commentary for BFME 1 on the patch 2.22 in a phenomenal, great matchup between Rohan and Isengard. Alright, double farm opening for Rohan into Mary Rock Brandybok. And Uruk pit farm is opening for Isengard into more Uruks. He's going to capture this one in the front. One peasant is leading from the top side and one of them leading through the bottom side. So splitting his peasant. Mary is leading to the middle camp around this location. So the Uruks won't be able to find those peasants, you know. These are the sneaky pathways. And remember, splitting them will give you the option because there are three possible targets. You have three settlements to attack. And splitting is not good when there is only one or two settlements, but when there are multiple settlements you can attack, splitting your peasants might be a great strategy. Because you can have so many more peasants than your opponent can have, um, you know, Uruks. So Vorjan is going to be used offensively. Rohan wasn't able to capture this one in the front yet. And he's going to attack this lumber mill over here. And one peasant sneaking through the bottom side to attack this lumber mill over here. Which might be destroyed. In the meantime, this peasant was able to capture the settlement at the top side. And very smart move from Rohan to run into the war player. So keep the Uruks busy. Knowing that you can't win the fight, you can at least try to stall like he just did, you know. In the meantime, this lumber mill is about to be destroyed. Same also to this lumber mill. So that means the eco from Isengard won't be that good. He's trying to destroy this farm over here. He will be able to do this because the peasants were recruited a bit too late. And they won't come out just in time. Rohan will be capturing the settlement too. And he brings more peasants eventually from the top side. Yes, he does. So in a one-on-one -on -one situation, Uruks will always win. Even without the Vorchan, they are the strongest swordsmen in the game. But his eco is really bad, you know. He needs to try to creep something, which is very important. He was able to destroy this farm. That's not bad. Uruk's almost level 2. Not bad at all. And this farm, he's repairing it. You see? The repairing is so significant in those situations. And he will be able to save the farm too. And Mary and one more peasant is coming to destroy the settlement in the front one more time. In the meantime, Isengard is trying to creep, which is very important because his eco is not looking by all means. And he will get some money out of it, you know. Warchan almost available. Uruk Pit needs one more Urukai to get to level 2. But he is not that rich because he keeps losing stuff over and over again. He was able to capture the settlement for himself. That's not bad. The money here from this creep is going to be also quite helpful. And the furnace for now has been protected and saved. But the lumber mill once again going down. The peasants almost level 2. They will hit level 2 after killing some of the workers. And that's going to be very hard to be dealt with. I mean, the Uruks can't win this fight. There is, there is no way. There is also a habit behind throwing rocks at the Uruks. But there is a bazaar coming. Now it's going to be a different situation. Warchan is going to be used defensively. In the meantime, he's trying to capture, um, destroy this farm over here. Creep secured. And the Berserker is bringing the Hobbit to Isengard. Alright, beautiful. So now the farm is going to be destroyed. Berserker hitting very hard as you can see and tell. And the peasants will be able to destroy this slaughterhouse over here. The farm has been destroyed but rebuilt by Rohan. And... There are many creeps to be taken, you know, many creeps to be taken. We have, there is a creep, there is a creep, and there is a creep, and the creep here has been already taken down. It means there is no more creep, and this is a very valuable structure for Aizen to keep him kind of in the game. And now with two lumber mills, he will also get the wood bonus, which makes his structure cost 10% less. And with this help and cheaper structures, he will be eventually able to fill up the base very soon. Which is also very important because Rohan's money is looking way better than Isengard. Big mistake here with the Rohirrim. You can't win the 1v1 fight against Pikeman. But he will be barely able to you know, save them. Two power points collected which needs to be in invested into the industry. Will be chosen and immediately used on the furnace next to the Uruk pit. So the bees, as you can see and tell, not looking too hot. Berserker. In a one-on-one -on -one situation, the level 2 peasant should be able to win against the Berserker. And they will turn and prove that the peasants with draft are also not to be underestimated. And more units are coming from every peasant, from every uh, farm. And that's the power of Rohan, right? Because your barracks is a printing money machine too. 
that's very unique to Rohan exclusively. A structure that is working as a barracks and as a farm at the same time, you know? So Vorten has been used on this pikemen in the Uruks. They will try to creep the Vorklea at the bottom side of the map. With Vorchan, the pike should be able to do this, no problemo. Yeah, no problemo at all. They will also hit level 2 after this one. And now we have some, you know, Rohirrim coming, trampling down the Uruks to save the level 2 peasant and they will be able to do this too. But remember, there are always peasants and pikes, you can't really send them out alone. Luckily, Isinger player is paying attention and he will be able to save those pikemen. So what you need to do if you can't afford walk riders is you need to have a combo between berserker and pikemen. You can't combine them, but you can have them in one group, you know. And here uh, you see pikes are demolishing the peasants. I mean the Rohirrim and the berserker is going to demolish the peasants. It's a cost efficient and cheap combo. We have now Lourdes up on the field for the Isengard player. Very good investment. The money is still looking very good for Rohan. He has armory, forge bleeds purchased. Shields about to be purchased. And as we are talking, there are no more creeps left. So basically, Isengard was able to take two creeps and Rohan was able to take two creeps. And all the maps, all the creeps from the map, mirroring stream, have been entirely destroyed. Lord's going to be a great asset for the lead game Isengard with his leadership, which is very important. But he won't be able, he won't have an easy time to kill those Rohirrim when they have the shields. Because with the shields, they get increased armor against arrows, which makes them quite beefy, you know. For an archer hero like Lord's, who is now exposed by the way. They have no blades yet, but they are buying blades. There comes the Alvin special summon. And Lord's, without backup because pikemen are getting killed, can't survive this. Get over here! There is nobody coming over here, my friend. And now, at this point of the game, Isengard has to spam pikemen all over the place. And you see more and more peasants are coming from every single location, making it very tough. And macro is very important in those situations. Warchen is going to be used. Demolishing towers is essential. But good micro by the Rohan player. He took a lot of damage. Heal will be used. Heal will always replace one of the dead units from the battalion. More pikemen is gonna, are going to be recruited. But the elves are demolishing every pikeman. Even with Warchant, they don't stand a chance against the mighty elven warriors. Outpost captured by Isengard. Berserka will be able to defend this. This has been destroyed. A level 4 peasant over here. And now the full commitment with the heavy armor, forge bleeds and the horseman shields on the Uruk pit. Uruk pit a tanky structure for sure. But not tanky enough to withstand against a level 5 Rohirrim with forge bleeds. Towers are getting demolished. And without the Uruk pit, that means Isengard won't be able to produce any more Uruks, I mean Uruk pikemen, anytime soon. Industry is going to be used on the furnace behind. Industry will also help this structure to develop faster. You know, this structure will be hitting level 2 way faster as you can see and tell. And also level 3 way faster. Lourdes has to be revived, but he's only level 1. It means the reviving him is not going to be very expensive. And also he will be there in 1 minute and 30 seconds. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, now, you need to invest a thousand to get the Uruk pit to level 2. That means you either have to make two crossbowmen and one Urukai or five Uruks, but you need to invest a thousand. Which is going to take a long time. You know, 20 seconds times 2, 40 here, 62 seconds. Which is quite long, you know. More crossbowmen are going to be recruited. And they will be sent behind, so you can combine them now. And he can, he, they can chill over here until you are ready to go. He has 1400, um, might go for the devastation from the spell book just to get the money boost, you know? And with the money boost, you can actually buy upgrades or you can go for um, walk riders or even Saruman. We have plenty of options. We have uh, heavy armor in forge bleeds for the peasants. They will demolish those structures in time. We have also Theoden King on the field. You can see the pikemen, they don't have any chance. Even without upgrades, the peasants can actually melt those pikemen. They are very weak against swordmen. And we have lots of Rohirrim. Holy guacamole. Watch this. Master the Rohirrim. <laughs> Alright. Now we have four Rohirrim with all kind of upgrades. Not many pikemen remaining. Uruk pit just got level 2. Uh, Lord's busy killing those peasants. Full commitment, demolishing the towers in time. We have lots of peasants, uh, lots of pikemen here. And the mistake from Rohan is to run into one direction, but he will be once again getting the chance to commit to the Uruk pit. Very bad mistake from Isengard to leave the um, Uruk pit exposed like this, which will be destroyed one more time. Uh, pikemen are still around this location though. The peasant should try to kill the pikemen always. Where is Lords at? Lords has to come and cripple this. There comes the Vorchan on the pikemen. 
Lourdes is here. He will get a grapple off on King Theodine. Theodine is going to not be able to move anytime soon. And in those situations, it would be amazing if you can leave the last hit to Lourdes. Yeah, he micros around. Beautiful. Nice. So level 3, Lourdes means he has Carnage unlocked once he's able to use a sword. And he's going to go for the Devastation. Devastation has 6.2. And the money will be invested into Saruman. So lots of action going on in the Isengard castle. But the map dominance is still from Rohan. Rohan is extremely powerful in those kind of situations. As you can see and tell. Outpost captured. He will have to recruit three Yeoman archers to get it to level 2. Which will give him the chance to buy the Fire Rose. Then he can either go for the Alvin Warriors or go for the Rohirrim archers. But he has either case a lot of money. Might also go for the Outpost number 2 at the top side of the map. So should be in a very phenomenal spot. But Saruman is a very great hero when it comes to defend and stall the game out, okay? So here at this part of the game, Isengard player's goal is to stall to keep defending for the next 3 to 4 minutes. And with the rotation of the industry plus the devastation, he should be able to keep himself alive and wealthy enough to make an army worthy of Mordor, okay? And Isengard is very good with the defense of the pikemen, with the pikemen and Saruman. Big commitment. But there is a difference now. Ooh, he stole them all. Nice, let's go. And now the attack will be cancelled immediately. You see the importance and the, the, the benefit of having a wizard on your side like this. And he will be trampling down the elves from his opponent with the Rohirrim he just stole, you know. And in the meantime, he's making army behind. And here, an important tip. When you play against Isengard and you are able to destroy the Uruk pit over and over again, but every time you go back and his Uruk pit is level 2, you need to understand that he has to have an army somewhere. In most situations, the Isengard player will hide the army behind the castle. So what you could do is rush through the castle and try to find those combos. Because they have no upgrades most of the time. That means one trample will actually end all of them and you will be able to farm so many power points. Talking about the power points, we have in total two power points for uh, the Rohan player. He has Alvin summon Draft Heal. He might go for the Anduri Sword, because I believe he has a lot of money. He's building more farms around this location. He's cancelling them, though. His army everywhere. He's going for a triple statue. It means he has three here and one here. He will have the full hero bonus of 30%, making it very cheap to recruit those heroes. So for that, for that reason, these two, out, uh, two power points might be invested into the Anduri Sword, because Aragorn without Anduri is basically like Gandalf without Gandalf to buy power point. And Isengard went for Devastation and Industry, and he has two power points on top of that. He needs five more power points to actually get to Freezing Green, which is very important if you want to commit to the Outpost. Because at the Outpost, you will have Theodin leadership, Stichu, eventually even Aragorn leadership, and you have only uh, Warchant and Lourdes, I mean Saruman. Lourdes is not level 5 just yet. Okay, more and more pikemen. He's trying to kind of keep some of the map for himself, but Devastation every 3 minutes and 45 seconds being quite helpful to get the money boost. And this hero can level them up. March to Helm Steve. He bought the banner on them. That's very important, by the way. <clears throat> he bought the banner on them, so they got level 2. And with the Speechcraft, they got level 3 Im immediately. You know, very important move there because each level will make them significantly stronger. Big mistake, he's committing to one structure only with like five battalions of horses. The fireball will not deal a lot of damage. They were too far away. And But you see, here it's important to understand what is going on. Isengard is able to stall the game out. Now he has a huge army and when he keeps defending himself all the time, he will always have a power point advantage over his opponent. Power point advantage... I don't need to explain what this can mean, you know, in the lead game. Warchan available. Aragorn has been recruited. Does he have Anduri Sword? The answer is no. He has combos. One, two, three, four Elven Warriors. Plenty of Rohirrim. Double leadership for the army with Aragorn and Theorin. That means they have in total 90% more damage and 50% more armor. And that's basically almost, that's basically more than what Isengard has. Because Lords is not level 5 yet, you know. Isengard is only 50% damage with the war chant. It's gonna be used. Now you can you should disengage here. Yeah, that's exactly what you need to do, you know. Beat the war chant, and whenever the war chant has been used, you can disengage 
and wait for the duration because Warchan has a 2 minutes and 10 seconds cooldown but the duration is only working for 40 seconds that means you have a 1.5 minutes window until the Warchan is going to be ready again and this is the time for you to shine, you know in which you can overpower your enemy's army with your own army Legolas is also going to be very good when it comes to kill heroes like Saruman Saruman very vulnerable against arrow damage from heroes like Legolas the station is reloading, Warpit is building up for Isengard, and we have lots of pikemen. That's what you need to do. Look, pikemen in the front, pikemen here. You need always like two, three pikemen in the castle, just to be able to defend yourself. But the map is looking white to me. There is only one single settlement for Isengard, the mill, the closest to his castle. Industry being quite helpful. On this level 3 furnace, you get so much benefit out of that. And look, he's killing pike horses here. Um, and Rohan wasn't paying attention. Okay, one more rush is happening. But again, pikemen everywhere. Works without upgrades. They don't send a chance. In the meantime, we have a fight here. Fireball has been used. He's trying to be using the macro advantage. Using the horses to rush the bees while his infantry army trying to engage on the fight. But he's never willing to fully commit. Which he should, by the way. Because he had that more leadership than his opponent does. You know? Especially shoot with Legolas and or Gimli's extra can be used over and over again. You have so much healing for your heroes. You have Aragorn's Atelas and heal from the Svealvok. And he can only cripple one of the heroes, you know, Lourdes. Who also, by the way, is only one level away from getting to level 5. That's going to be a whole different situation once Lourdes gets huge upgrade with his leadership, you know. Four power points. It looks like you want to go for the end special summon, which is not bad, by the way. It might sound bad, but you can summon the ends on top of the enemy army and trample them. Rohan is command points kept. He can't produce any more units. Going for the last hero remaining, that's going to be Eowyn, the shield maiden of Rohan, and a bunch of elven warriors. We have five of them. And the elves are actually very mobile. The combos from Isengard can never catch them, and they are also outranging any archer in the game. So you, can, oh, you have to hit and run potential. Whenever they turn back like this, you can disengage. Elves are damage dealers, not the tankiest units in the game. The combos are always tankier than any single archer unit. Warchant with the walk riders and he's committing now. In the meantime, peasants were trying to attack the bees, but they can't achieve it. Beautiful trampling coming. My works are hungry. And one more trample. This yeoman, pe yeoman peasant combo is very vulnerable against the trample damage, as you can see and tell. The works are demolishing these combos. But does he have Freezing Rain? Yeah, he has the power points now for the Freezing Rain. Rohan has actually almost 6 power points too, which might be invested into the uh, end summon on top of the enemy army. Uh, here, it's important for Isengard to destroy the well, because you don't want the enemy units to, re to recover. The well is going to be destroyed, not demolished. 6 power points now, he has the power points for the ends. Will he go for it? The works are inting it a bit. Not as strong as you might think. Around this location, too many Alvin warriors. And remember, the works, unlike the um, Rohirrim or Knights Actually he was going for a beautiful base rush But he lost a level 5 Rohirrim Was able to destroy 2 furnaces in the Uruk pit one more time And he has almost 7 power points He might go uh, He can't go for the for the cloud break yet Because you need to first of all pick I think you can't go Maybe you can, let me think Yeah you can, you can, you can, you can You can, you can go for the cloud break with 7 power points Because the elves are in the middle of the tree then you have the chance to choose either one. You know, you can go either ends or the Cloud Break. Cloud Break low key might not be bad in this situation. Because when the rain is not active and when Warchan is on cooldown, your Cloud Break will guarantee that you will out damage your opponent, reduce their armor and their movement speed. It means they can't get away from you. Isengard, I mean, Rohan is rich. Isengard, not that much. Of course not. Because here's Devastation again, you see? That's the power of evil. You see how much money he got from it? E good factions have the summons, like elves, ends, EOD, and evil factions have only one summon, the Balrog. But they have, for that reason, abilities and power points that can give them increased resources, like Devastation 2, Scavenger from Mordor, Industry from either Mordor or Isengard, or, um, you know, Field of Fires, for example. All of these can increase your money big time. Works recruited. And that's the patch 2.2 right there, boys. It kind of forces you to recruit every single kind of unit from the beginning until the very end. 
this is all Isengard has to offer besides siege weapons. And siege weapons are not the greatest choice against Rohirrim because they will get one tapped, the siege weapons, and they also feed lots of power points. And the reason you should ever make siege weapons is either you want to siege the base, which is not going to happen anytime soon, or he has army that is immobile and stronger than yours. Then you need siege weapons too. Okay, the outpost one more time captured. Rohan, smart move to not fully commit when the rain is active. You will, you know that you can't win the fight. So, it, you know, disengaging is the best call. And Lourdes is still not level 5, but he's very close for it. Very close to it. He might go for the war chant play, but remember, without the freezing rain, it's kind of risky to do anything like this. And he has also Grand Harvest on his farms, as you can see and tell. Getting lots of money from this level 3 farm, he gets 30. From this level 2 farm, he gets 23. Usually you get only 19, so you get actually lots of benefits. And what is important for Isengard is to save the singular units. And uh, Saruman was far away. Beautiful trampoline coming. Fortune is active, though. He, and Lourdes just got level 5. Saruman! And he stole them all! Holy guacamole! That's why you need to always keep at keep paying attention to your uh, to the enemy wizard, you know? The wizards are able to change the outcome of the game. Beautiful wizard plus from the young wizard Saruman. I'm telling you boys, okay? I'm telling you boys. Isengard has two heroes only. Yes, it's true, but these two heroes are both hitting like an absolute track. Beautiful. Lords level 5 too, that's even better. And you know what would be even better? If Lords gets level 6 for the pillage. That means you have then one more ability that can give you even more money, greater money. In the meantime, the Vorks were able to destroy the outpost, almost. But in a one-on-one -on -one situation against fully upgraded Rohirrim, you don't stand a chance. Because they have the shields you can't buy, you can't purchase. Entmut? I mean, Rohan has so much money, he can do whatever he wants. He can go for the Entmut, he can go for the Treebeard, he can go for a secondary Entmut. And Ents don't cost money, you know, that's a free army you will take. I mean, don't cost command points. You will get this four Ents right off the bat. He's preparing a, a Rohirrim army at the top side and pushing from the bottom. Isengard, very strong camp faction. I mean, against Rohan, you can camp it out quite decently, especially now with double leadership from your Lords or Saruman. It's only important that you don't lose your heroes. That's the essential part about this. All right, not demolishing in time. Pikemen have to rotate. Four Rohirrim are coming from both the locations. There comes the Elvin summon to kill the Pikemen around this area. The Furnace is level three, not that tanky against Rohirrim with full upgrades. They will go down in a few seconds. In the meantime, oh, he was not paying attention to Saruman. Saruman might go actually down, but the Vorks are actually doing a good job over here. The Ents will feed now lots of power points, but in the meantime, the Warp has been fully destroyed. So now, I don't think you will be able to deal way more damage than that to the opponent, because combos are rotating. What Isengard has been doing all the time is to save at least one unit from the battalion and send them behind the castle, so they can respawn slowly but surely over time. This way, you will have always a second army you can replace the first army with. And this way, you can even extend your command points. You can have more than 500, you know. And we've seen lots of times Isengard in the lead game having like 10 combo battalions. You know, that's very powerful. He has two combos, three combos, four combos. And he has now freezing green. It's under usage. So are, maybe he want to commit to the outpost now. Let's see if this going to happen. Again, Rohan has full map control. Grand Harvest on every single farm, getting lots of resources. But he has two combos recovering here. The Pikeman recovering here. Full commitment, beautiful fireball from the young wizard Saruman. The, the horses are rotating, but I think he knows committing to this is not the greatest idea. Elma level 3, half a level needed for level 4, and also his pillage is coming in clutch in those situations. Powerpoint wise, actually Rohan is almost AUD, boys. Rohan is almost the AUD, and Isengard has only 13 and a half power points. Remember, he went for the, for the Palantium and for the Devastation. If he wouldn't do this, he would have 18 and a, 18 and a half, and the power points would be quite even. Oh, ah, that's a mistake. He, was, he wanted to steal them, I believe. But Eowyn getting the kill. Now the heroes are inting it, running it down. Eowyn getting one-shotted. Eoma is going to also get one-shotted. No, he's going to survive just in time. AOD is going to be special summoned. But as Isengard is losing army, especially Lourdes, 
Um, he will get power points from it, 18 power points. Let's look what's happening when Lourdes goes down. But maybe he can survive this because he went with the vision of Palantir. Now he's zooming, you know. Uruks. Can he get away from this? Can he get away from this? Run, run, run. Can't touch this. Get over here. <laughs> okay, he go down. And you see he's getting power points from this. Now he needs only half a power point. Remember, he lost the army here. But again, he kept some of the army behind the bees. Now they can rotate. And Vatarine is not available, and this army from Rohan is way too powerful to deal with, especially because he lost both the heroes like Lourdes and Saruman. Maybe War Riders can actually do stuff, and he is committing now to get the remaining power points. The elves are very powerful in those skirmishes with this much leadership. There is also a Legolas who is all about to hit level 5 for even a greater amount of leadership. But there comes the demon of the ancient world! Uh, Darkfire will not avail you, Flame of Ilma. He's trying to get to Aragorn, but Aragorn is very fast now with the Anduri Sword. You wanna use on... Give, ah, he wanna kill the Ilma first. Just why not, you know? Because Rohan is not that rich anymore. He lost his Legolas, he lost his Ilma, and he lost, like, a lot of his army. He has only few Rohirrim, and Rohirrim can't really do much when there are so many pikemen upon the field. So now, it's all about stalling again, because, you know, Saruman was level 7, he has 2 minutes and 50 seconds revive time. It's a very long time for Saruman to get back in the business. Level 3, Gimli, jump! Beautiful jump on the pike when they will be getting slain. Balrog has no more time. He will be able to destroy only one of the farms and his time is over. Okay, but we have 3 combos still, one of them being level 5. And remember, that's what he's doing all the time. And that's what keeps him alive. Always make army, keep producing army. And whenever one combo battalion gets damaged, you want to send them back and they can recover. And whenever AOD is going to happen or something like this, you have another army that can back you up, you know? Saruman has been revived. Almost level 8, that's going to unlock the will of Saruman. Saruman, say whatever you want, is for me still the MVP of this game. He has been doing phenomenal, magical, you know, tricks and stuff to get lots of work done. Okay, so now, let's see. Huge army from Aizen. And Rain is available. Fireball will be used. Level 8 unlock for the young wizard, for the Will of Saruman, for the healing. Now, with the healing, you can actually go for more risky plays. Because the heal has no animation, it goes off immediately. That means you can go for a, for a Warm Tongue play, and you can heal. Eowyn is inting it, but the ends will be special summoned. Immediately pressing the X button on the en ends as they get summoned, as you can see and tell. But there is just too much raw firepower at this point of the game. And once again, he stole them all, dude. I can't believe it. The elves were taking over. Will of Saruman is coming in clutch. The ends are falling. Level 7 for Lords. And the pillage is coming in clutch, giving him lots of money, which he desperately needs. In the meantime, he's making more and more army. The Uruk Pit got level 3 once again. He has walk riders around this location. They are, he, they are getting upgraded. Maybe they will be used for the map control. The elves are dying. And Rohan is not that rich anymore, boys. He never re revived his Elma, which is a mistake in my opinion. Elma, essential hero. Level 4. Maybe it can give you the chance to keep Elma with your Rohirrim. And because he was trying to sneak in with Rohirrim multiple times. And imagine you do this with Elma. And the Elma gives you 70% more damage leadership. You will melt through all of these structures in a few seconds. So now all the power points unlock from the spellbook for Rohan. And also almost all power points unlock for Isengard. He needs only one more power point for the, for the re remaining power point, which is the Field of Fires. In the meantime, the War Riders uh, are going ham. Eowyn is actually very tanky with the Shield Maiden. Gives you so much more armor. Aragorn is coming. The Pikes have to retreat. And also the Vorks should retreat. You can't fight against Aragorn when he has Blade Master and Anduril combination. And saving them is essential. Outpost captured by Isengard. Going for furnaces, running out of money. But again, the Vestition about to be ready one more time. The Vestition has been so valuable in this game for Isengard. Okay, beautiful. So full bees. The Vestition has been used. And... Pikeman here, lots of command points upon the field. Fill the fires, unlock from the spellbook. And now they are rotating to the top outpost, you know? 
But I think um, what Rohan is trying to do is he's avoiding those all-out fights, knowing that Isengard army, as we are talking, is way too powerful. What could eventually be a possibility is this dude. You want to leap, and just before your leap lands on the enemy army, you use the Alvin Wood. So you can one-shot the army, get level 5, and then Lourdes has to cripple you. Because imagine if he cripples Aragorn or Theoden or Legolas, your Gimli can run them down. You know, with the Slayer, you can 3-shot Saruman, 3-shot Lourdes. They have no chance. Pike's gonna be sent to the bottom, but there are Elves coming. With the Elves, they should be able to defend this outpost. Now they're running for their lives, the Pikemen. Also, the, uh, the three Hunters are coming, Gimli, Legolas, and also Aragorn. Legolas now almost level 5. The outpost here in the meantime will be taken down. EOD, remember, was used before the Balrog. It means the Rohan player will get to summon his second Balrog, uh, second EOD, before Isengard gets to use his second Balrog. Always important to mention, that's why it's important to make again a secondary army. You need to know, okay, my opponent will have AOD. And with the AOD, I don't want him to kill my whole army. So I make like tiny army with my heroes. The, these are two combos. But quality beats quantity, they have double leadership with the Warch and even triple leadership. And I have my second army behind the piece. So I don't get defeated if my army, if this army gets destroyed by my opponent's EOD, you know? That's the whole plan. Okay, Eoma has been recruited or revived, rather. Level 4, I mean, that's basically as strong as Rohan can get. He, he's only missing the glorious charge from Theodin, but he's about to be get there, you know? Almost level 4. One trample into this, might get you this. Oh, that's gonna be a hint. Well, level 4, beautiful trample! And there goes down the... Cripple, but EOD will be summoned. I mean, this EOD right there was a big mistake. Saruman is running for his life. He's speedy Gonzalezing, you know, with the with the Palantir. Beautiful fireball from the young wizard Saruman. Remember, his warm tongue is on cooldown. This EOD should look for the remaining army, but he doesn't see. That's the vision of the Rohan player. Now he saw them, and the EOD should spring to this location, but they have not much time remaining on the field anymore. There's still a huge Rohirrim army over here. They should be able to deal tremendous amount of damage to the economy and to the bees. Might even go for them. Orphan. And it's gonna get destroyed by the Rohirrim too. He's reviving his lords from this outpost, which is very smart. And Legolas is going ham. Using the Hulk Strike on the crossbow man. Alvin summon full commitment on the bees from Isengard. <coughs> I'm dying over here. Alright. Can go for a trample. In those situations, what you need to do... It's always aim on, on um, Theodin with the towers and everything, you know. Your furnace is level 3, will also be able to hurt him. And summon will be used from behind. Power points are rising, but they can't be used. He's aiming on Theodin. Theodin is going to be getting killed. In the meantime, Vorks were able to take down the outpost at the bottom side. Remember, these two combos should not be underestimated. They are still level 5 and level 6 combos. The furnace here will be taken down. But for now, the attack has been defended. Take a look into the eco from Rohan. He has barely a thousand. And, you know, Isengard is almost 5,000. He has a Urpit here. His Saruman was even able to survive this AOD. And Lourdes is about to be revived too. And this combos can stall until he will have a new army coming from this location. <coughs> okay, so uh, Balrog will be summoned now offensively. What you need to do with the Balrog is you want to break the gate so your army can go inside. If you are not feeling confident to destroy the whole base, which is going to be difficult because he has two level 3 production buildings and you can't one shot production buildings anymore with your Balrog. He's sending in the War Riders with the War Chant. He's not using it. It looks like he doesn't want to use the War Chant here. He's going for the structures. With the War Chant, he might do actually more damage. In the meantime, he's pre preparing to attack one more time with this army of Rohirrim and Aragorn. The Vorks couldn't finish it because they have no shields. The level 5 Rohirrim Archer, beautiful fireball, killing the Rohirrim before the time is over. He has two combos here. Lord's all about to be back. And now the full commitment with Aragorn and Duri Sword. But there are three combos. All of them are highly level 2. And I did not work on them, dude. They are immune to fear with level 3 or higher. 
and the Rohirrim, they are not as strong. The combos are very powerful in those situations. Aragorn needs to hit them 3-4 times to kill them actually, because the Bleedmaster is not active anymore. The army is coming now from this location, Warchan has been used on this army. Look, they are melting Aragorn, melting Aragorn, melting Aragorn and killing Aragorn. And Lord Saruman back in the business, the bees from Isengard not looking too hot. He has 1200, that's gonna be barely enough to, you know, replace the Citadel. He has their outpost only with double furnace. Industry has been used on the outpost furnace here. And, you know, luckily he has Devastation and luckily he has Lord's Pillage. And luckily he has also army already. He has two combos behind. He always keeps some army behind the castle, very important. He has three combos here. One of them being level 9, almost level 10. Now they can commit to the outpost. Rain is on cooldown, but it doesn't matter because Aragorn has been killed, Theoden has been killed. That means we have no leadership anyway to, to be negated. Oh, you can't run into this like this. Oh my god. Oh, can he get away? Oh yeah, he gotta get he got away. Alright. In the meantime, Gimli is committing to the outpost around this location. Gimli has Slayer. We'll be using it to get more structural damage. And there is a level 3 Rohirrim. What can they do against the pikemen? They will die eventually. Um, they are focusing on Gimli. Beautiful leap attack to kill a lot of stuff. The level 1 pikemen crossbow. No, pikemen Urukai combo actually. The Zita is still remaining. In the meantime, the outpost full focus. Legolas, the prince of the Mirkwood Elves, got crippled. You shall not move, son. You can't get away from me. Go down. 126. Big Palantir, Cloudbreak has been used. And uh, one combo has been finally taken down. I think that's the only combo he lost beside to the EUD. Um, he's very poor, though. He's very broke. Uh, but he's getting money for killing stuff from the Pillage of Lourdes. And because he's not demolishing it, uh, he's giving him money because you get even money for killing structures, destroying structures. Plus 20 for each elf you kill. The Vestation is on cooldown. In the meantime, he was going to the Bees of Rohan, destroying this level 3 furnace, uh, level 3 slaughter, uh, not slaughterhouses, farms, I mean. Higher. Okay, will hurt you because they give you much more money. And also, each of them had the Grand Harvest on them, you know? Eowyn fighting. Will, get, will be able to get away. He was going for a land trample move, but the army is way too powerful. Again, there's a level 10 combo battalion, which is badly damaged. Do the same thing. Keep them behind so they can recover over time. Base is filling up slowly but surely. Industry has been used. Two combos. What a game is this, dude? Alright, Slaughterhouse here. AOD is about to be back up one more time. And you need to be prepared for this, you know? So he's keeping the level 10 away, as you can see. Because they can't really contribute too much to the fight anyway as they are badly damaged. And he has one combo, level 3. Now you might say one combo, it's not gonna do much. But trust me, man, in this game it's all about quality, boys, you know? This combo with Lord's leadership, Saruman leadership, Warchant, and the chance that you can steal them if you want, Tonk, is, should not be underestimated at all. In the meantime, the outpost here, full under focus, it will go down. Um, the, uh, the own units are body blocking Gimli. Does he have heal from the Spellbook? Yes, he does have heal from the Spellbook. But the pikemen are coming with the forge blades. They will melt those Rohirrim. They were able to destroy the citadel first. Need more pikemen eventually. But he will lose this Rohirrim. And it's not like he's that rich, you know. Losing those Rohirrim is a big mistake. Gimli is a tanky boy. He's going to use the extra level 6. Uh, army rotating. There is, a, there is a combo here at the bottom. There are two combos behind. And works everywhere, you know. Now the map control switching over to <laughs> the co map control is switching over to Isengard. And Rohan is not that rich anymore, but he has the power point advantage. Cripple will be used. You shall not move. Carnage. Let it be carnage. Shall we not make peace, you and I? <laughs> Lord, the hero of the heroes. Oh my god, man. There was Rohirrim without, without upgrades, you know? Because he's poor. He can't afford too much anymore. And the Vorgs are trying to destroy the remaining settlements. Outpost captured by Isengard. This one has been saved by Isengard too. The Ains, they have lots of time, but they will be disappearing eventually. B is fully rebuilt. He's not going for the Uruk pit anymore. He want to go for the for the Vorg pit, for the mobility, for the mobile units. Because I believe he's planning to finish off the game with the next Balrog. 
Diodo full fireball. Kill the whole battalion, dude. What is this hero? Look at him. Look at him. Handsome. Juicy. Famous. I don't know. Impressive. All of that stuff, you know? I mean, dude, Isengard fully unleashed. What a game. What a game. You see, it's quite even also. Like, it's not one-sided at all. Um, the matchup can also go back and forth. Um, I think Rohan was too scared most of the times to take a fight. The rain... When the rain is on cooldown, that's the time you want to take a fight with your elves. If, because you have Aragorn leadership, Tyrion leadership, and Legolas. And Gimli can jump. You have so much, so many tools. But he never utilized the tools in a, in a decent way. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Outpost will be rebuilt very, very soon. Isengard has enough money to keep producing more walk riders. They cost a little bit less because he has some slaughterhouses over here. Um, they will reduce the cost of your walk riders by 10, 15, up to 30%. Which is not bad by all means. Okay, Gimli has been crippled. There is no surviving this. Fireball B. Ho Did he kill Hobbit? Yeah, he killed the Hobbit in again of the elves. Lords. EOD, but that's that's the thing, right? That's the game right there. Because EOD will be used, yes, to kill Saruman and also Lord. Saruman is fast, but he can't outrun the EOD. He will die eventually. He will die. Trying to micro. Using the Vela of Saruman. Use the Visa Blast. Visa Blast them. Uh, run, run, run. Oh, your stuff is broken. But Balrog is available now. And now what? Army will be moving. I mean, you just thought you killed the army, but he has three combos, four combos, and two walk riders, man. He has still 400 command points. That's what you want to do in the lead game against Rohan or Gondor. They have always a secondary army to back you up. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, you will die. Ah, uh, the trample into the pikeman level 5 combo. Not the smartest idea of all time. Gimli committing to the outpost around this location. He will instantly revive his Saruman and Lourdes. They have like really long revive time. And he doesn't even need to use... I think he doesn't even need to use the Balrog. Because the gate is still broken. He never repaired it. And there is nothing inside. He has 25 out of 250 command points available. Not that much money anymore. Don't give evil factions too much time, boys. Don't give them too much time. He's demolishing everything and that's gonna be the game, boys. Isengard shall rule the Middle-earth. If you enjoyed this, you know what to do. Leave a like to this video. Subscribe for more videos like this in the future. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck and as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.